This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 679, Romanticizing Poverty and Learning Financial Independence, by Kristen Wong with GetRichSlowly.org. And I'm Dan, the guy who reads to you from some of the very best blogs on personal finance, and you can send us your topic requests. If you've got an idea for something you'd like to hear me cover here on the show, please let me know at oldpodcast.com. And today's post comes from a guest author on Get Rich Slowly, Kristen Wong. And if you've been listening for a while, that name should sound familiar to you because I narrate her blog, thewildwong.com. She actually wrote this one about five years ago, and I think that was before she even had her own website. And she actually talks about her history of writing on Get Rich Slowly on one of our newest podcasts. It's an interview show where actor, director, and comedian Jeff Grace chats with authors we narrate and others about personal development-related topics. The show is called Self-Obsessed with Jeff Grace, and you can find Kristen in episode four, so definitely check that out. And I'll give you a quick reminder about that at the end. So for now, let's get right to our post as we optimize your life. Romanticizing Poverty and Learning Financial Independence by Kristen Wong with GetRichSlowly.org In high school, I babysat a kid whose parents were pretty well off. And by well off, I mean they were crazy rich. One day, I decided to take the kid out for ice cream, my treat. When we got to the ice cream shop, I only had enough money to buy him the small, and he wanted the large. What then followed wasn't exactly a temper tantrum. It's probably better described as a communication breakdown. He was legitimately confused as to why he couldn't have the larger size. He truly couldn't understand the concept of not enough money. Price was not a matter of quantity to him, but simply a choice. It was like asking whether he wanted vanilla, strawberry, or chocolate. The idea that his options were limited because of cost was beyond him. He also didn't understand that I was treating him. From his perspective, the ice cream was always there for him to begin with. It didn't matter who happened to be forking over the money. I recently recounted this story to my mom, complaining about how this kid probably wouldn't grow up to learn the tenets of financial independence like I did because he was privileged and I grew up so poor. We weren't that poor, my mom said dryly. You exaggerate. She then reminded me that she truly grew up poor. She had dreams about her next meal. She shared a single room with seven brothers and sisters. My mom reminded me that she lived in a remote village in Hong Kong, for crying out loud. My own mother was one-upping me in the impoverished childhood department, and she definitely won. But thinking about this situation and my mom's response, I've been pondering a couple of things. One, are privileged kids at a disadvantage when it comes to learning the lessons of financial independence? And two, have I romanticized being poor to facilitate my financial goals? And what are the implications of doing this? There is no success without hardship. Sophocles said this, And in my case, I found it to be true. Growing up poor forced me to learn the tenets of hard work, responsibility, and resourcefulness, qualities that have helped me find success in my endeavors. My mom had even less money, and she learned those lessons even more thoroughly. To this day, I've never seen anyone more frugal or with more self-control than my mother. So I grew up believing that wisdom comes with adversity. But thinking in terms of financial independence, what does this mean for those who grow up privileged? It's usually a parent's goal for their children to grow up without financial hardships. Consequently, can those children learn the lessons of personal finance just as powerfully without going through all the tough stuff? Can we be wise without having to endure adversity? How much can you learn with a safety net? Of course, it's possible for the privileged to learn to be industrious and diligent and all of that, but I feel like the lessons are much different when you have to learn them. Here's a somewhat nerdy example. In the dark night rises, spoiler alert, Bruce Wayne must escape his prison by climbing to the top of a deep pit and leaping out of it. He tries this a few times while secured by a rope, his safety net, and he's unsuccessful each time. Then he decides to try the escape without the rope. The motivation is, if he doesn't succeed, he'll fall to his death. Of course, Wayne finally succeeds without the rope. His will to survive leads him to accomplish his goal. He succeeds when there is no other option but to succeed. I know it's just a movie, but it's also a parable. So I ask myself, how successful can you be in learning the lessons of value, responsibility, etc., when you'll be totally fine if you don't? The problems with romanticizing poverty. I plan to have a safety net for my own kids. In fact, I don't plan on having kids until I can afford to have a safety net for them. 
Does this mean they'll grow up at a disadvantage when it comes to financial independence? Will they have less success because they have less adversity? How do I teach my kids to be financially independent when I plan to give them a financial safety net? Second, even though I finally have some financial elbow room and am able to live comfortably, I still have this impoverished mindset. I discussed this a bit when I wrote about not buying a new computer because I didn't feel like I'd suffered enough to afford a new computer. This mindset has kept me from enjoying the fruits of my financial independence. Exaggerating my poorness has worked in my favor in the past, especially when I needed to save money to pay off my student loans. But these days, it's given me a false sense of insecurity. And why else have I worked so hard for my financial independence if not to feel secure? Another issue I have with romanticizing poverty is that it's kind of condescending. Like a lot of lower middle class families, in our household, we always had this subtle resentment of people who, as my dad would say, had everything handed to them. I have a friend who's embarrassed by the fact that he's had everything handed to him. There's this unspoken shame you feel when you tell people you didn't pay for your own lifestyle. And that's not really fair. Why should there be a sense of haughtiness for people whose parents provided for them? My mom also pointed out that it's about perspective. What I considered poor, many people in the world would consider incredibly wealthy. It's insulting to call it poverty and say that I grew up poor when really, we may have struggled to pay utility bills, but we always had food. At any rate, I've been mulling over these thoughts in the past few weeks, especially in wondering how I'll teach my own children financial independence. You just listened to the post titled Romanticizing Poverty and Learning Financial Independence by Kristen Wong with GetRichSlowly.org. And a quick reminder, as promised, that you can hear Kristen's interview on the newest show in our podcast network, Self Obsessed with Jeff Grace. You can check out episode four with Kristen to hear her talk money, freelance writing, and more. And that'll do it for today. Thank you for being here. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.